this articulating feature really makes things nicer when you're trying to view whatever you're trying to view, especially when looking down a cylinder. Yo, yo, yo. What is up guys, Nick the Kai here. Well, that's Drift Media. Thank you for coming back to the channel. Or if this is your first time here, welcome on in. So today's episode, we are going to be doing uh, testing slash unboxing of the Teslong articulating borescope. They were nice enough to send me this tool to try out and produce a video for you guys so you guys can see uh, if it's worth buying, really. That's what it comes down to. So like all my product review videos, I will be doing a giveaway, giving away one of these exact tools I'm showing you guys in the video. So stay tuned, I'll drop the giveaway code word somewhere on the screen right here. And all you gotta do is enter that word or phrase in the comments to be entered for the giveaway. So anyways, let's get started unboxing this bad boy. All right, so right off the bat, it's pretty cool how it comes in this little protective case. I like when tools come with stuff like this, that way you can keep it stored away. You don't really have to worry about damaging it. Uh, nice little pre-molded bone case. So right here, it just comes with some uh, instructions, some cleaning wipes, which is very cool. Coming down to the tool itself and accessories, you have your USB charger cable, and we have the tool itself. So, oh, go ahead and slide this case over. Kind of talk about some key features about this. Start off with most important thing, price. Price on this tool is about $280 on Amazon. I'll leave the link down below. Uh, it's on sale though right now for about 240. So a pretty good deal. Five inch display screen, LCD, which is pretty nice. Shoots in 1920 by 1080 for photos and 1280 by 720 for video. Also includes audio, but it does capture the audio through up here, the actual tool itself, not the end. So, but I mean, audio is not really something you're gonna be using a borescope for. The cable itself is waterproof, but not the tool. A uh, nice thing about this too is right here on this little port, this is where you charge the battery, of course, USB port right here. Also comes with the 32 gigabyte micro SD card. So plenty of storage. In case you ever need to save some footage, send it to the customer, send it to the service writer. And also has the ability to stream what you're viewing on your phone or tablet. So I'll kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison so you guys can see, but in reality, I don't really like streaming to my phone. I'd rather just have a tool that can whip out and get to use. So go ahead and turn it on. Uh, one, the main thing about this borescope that separates itself from the rest of any borescope camera is this articulating function. This is probably what obviously sets it apart, but one of the best features about this borescope and why I really like it over other borescopes that I've tested out on the channel. Um, being a mechanic, really, we're only going to be using this for like, I would say two things, usually looking down a spark plug hole to look inside an engine cylinder, or maybe looking underneath an intake manifold somewhere, looking to trace wiring, or kind of look, get a better view on a connector, see if there's any damage or rodent damage. Those are mainly the times I used it. So one thing I like about this is the cable is not ridiculously long like some of the borescopes or more endoscopes, I guess. So this one is definitely geared more towards uh, mechanics. So that's something I really like, how it's just nice and simple. It's not too big, uh, not too long, where you have to wrap up the cable every time. It's like just enough. And I'll show you guys in a little bit, this articulating feature really makes things nicer when you're trying to view whatever you're trying to view, especially when looking down a cylinder. And it's just really fun to play with. Kind of just use this scroll wheel. Uh, it only goes left to right, but it has a full 180, almost. Claims 180, but maybe it depends on the way you have the cable set up. You can see that way it doesn't go as much. And if I pull it out, fully extend it. A little bit more. Oh yeah. So I guess it just depends on how you have the cable. If it's wrapped up and stuff, it kind of pulls tension and doesn't let you get that full bend. I'll give you a closer look. You guys can see. It's very smooth. It's one thing when they said it was articulating, I wasn't sure if it was like electronic motor in there that was able to turn the lens, but since it's all mechanical, 
it's nice to hope that maybe it'll be a little bit more reliable than if it had like some kind of little motor moving that head. So pretty, pretty interesting. So I kind of just have it rested up against those rags. That's what it's showing on the screen right there. But I'll go ahead and show you the controls right here. So pretty much we have our power button, of course. Hold that to turn the unit on. Uh, we have our flip to, uh, if you wanted to flip the camera angle versus turning the actual camera. That's pretty cool. Even has a zoom. 1.3, 1.5, and back to no zoom. Uh, over here we got our settings. Kind of if you want to mess with the resolution, it's already on the highest setting or highest quality setting, so we're just going to leave that there. Coming over to the side, we have some more settings. The Wi-Fi setting for when you do want to connect it to your phone, you can go ahead and do that, but we don't really be messing with too much of that. You can also format the card if you had to delete everything to clear the memory without plugging it into your computer. And then we just have our mode. Switch to video mode. The pictures you have taken would be displayed right here. And you can also adjust the brightness of the LED to no brightness at all, in case you're getting too much glare or something like that, you know? Right here, little camera button, that's gonna be where you take your screenshot if you're taking a picture or if you take a video. Uh, it said please format your card. Not too sure, maybe, because I was messing around with it on my computer. Go ahead and format that. Just reformat it. Let's see if that problem goes away. No, oh, yep. Okay. So, like I said, if you wanted to go into your photos taken, set the mode, video mode. That's the image, and you would, of course, just scroll through with whatever photos you had taken. Get back out of here. So, yeah, camera quality is pretty clear on this. Once I plug it in or uh, start looking through the car, I'll go ahead and upload this footage onto the screen, as well as the cell phone screen viewing, see if it's any different. But to me personally, I like just using the screen because it's just so much easier. So without further ado, no more talking. Let's go uh, put it down the 240. All right, so here we got a little side-by-side -side -side comparison. I don't know if you guys can tell right here. Hopefully I can stream the screen onto the this video, but the phone does have slightly a little bit more detail in the textures, but it's really not too far off. But I'll go ahead and leave this plugged in anyways, and we'll go ahead and dive down. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look inside the cylinder, see how things look. We are recording now. I'll go ahead and put this image on the screen so you guys can see. So, it's inside the cylinder. Let's go ahead and turn this puppy around. Boom. You guys can see, we're able to see the valves very nicely. If you had a burnt valve, bent valve, cracked valve, you would probably be able to figure it out with this right here. Another nice thing, look at the sidewalls. You know, they do have the bore scopes that have the 90 degree camera. But one thing with that is it's still kind of a pain in the ass because you're still kind of like trying to weasel the camera around versus having this extra little bit of play really makes things just a whole lot easier when you're going to look for something. So I do say the main reason you're using this is looking down in an engine, maybe looking for some wiring damage or some leaks. But another thing I found it useful for is sometimes when you can't see the brakes and you don't have a mirror, it's kind of nice to stuff this in if you have room and you can see your brake pad for life. Quick little inspection. Just be sure that both sides of the pads have a good life on them. That's one reason I would use this sometimes. But yeah, hopefully you guys can see the quality of the camera. 
I mean, obviously we're not shooting in no 4K, but for the price, this is very good. This honestly looks as good as the Snap-on borescopes I've tried. And it's like third of the price maybe, depending on which one you're looking at. Even finding part numbers sometimes that might be useful. Maybe trying to look at the code on an engine block or a transmission. Maybe a leak in the back of the valve cover. A lot of things actually, I guess you would use this for. So yeah, that pretty much sums up the testing out of this borescope. Let me know what you guys think about the, in the comments. So pros, I would say definitely the price, uh, a considerably normal size or ideal size cable length, not too long. Uh, the articulating 180 degree angle. That's really the coolest part, honestly. So badass <laughs> and just fun to play with. Um, Downsides, I would say, uh, really to me, it's just the width of the cable. See, it's like almost as wide as my pinky. So not too big of a problem, obviously, for most vehicles, this small 240, four cylinder KA24 engine, it was able to get in there no problem. But other than that, can't really think of any other cons. So let me know what you guys thought about this. Maybe drop a comment of your favorite boroscope that you really find useful. But again, the thing with boroscopes, being a mechanic, doing this for a living, this is one of those tools that you are not going to use every day. Guarantee it. Most, most scenarios at least. Uh, being in the field, working at Toyota, I would probably use this maybe like once a month. If that, um, a lot of the times I was really using this to find rodent damage under areas I couldn't see because that was a big problem at Toyota. And like I said, occasionally looking down cylinders but definitely not an everyday tool, so I don't see a reason in spending like $1,500, $1,000 on a high-end brand one when you're not gonna use it that much. And you just need a tool that'll get the job done. So that's all I got for you guys this episode. Uh, good luck on the giveaway. I'll be going live like always in a week or two to pick a winner, and hopefully one of you guys can take home this tool. So yeah, that's it. Catch you guys later. Peace!